What's up YouTube, back in the garage, working on the RX-8. And today I got one main thing I wanna do. Between today and tomorrow, this weekend, um, what I wanna do is get my shifter location down. So one thing that you may know if you're looking into running an AR5 transmission in any swap is that the ones from the Colorados, the shifter location is uh, in a very poor spot. So you can see um, the stock RX-8 shifter is here and my Colorado shifter is the Hoy up there. So what I'm gonna do today is make a linkage to connect um, from here back. And what I could have done is, and this would be the incorrect way, um, I could just weld a right angle on that shifter, bring it the whole way back here and then weld another right angle up and just have one solid piece. The only thing is then whenever you're shifting, you get weird um, translation between here and here. You could imagine whenever you shift forward, your, your linkage is gonna go like this. And then whenever you shift backwards, your linkage is gonna go like this and you're gonna get some weird angles while you're shifting. Um, I don't necessarily know if it's bad for the transmission, but it just might be hard to get in gear sometimes. It might feel weird, it might not feel totally natural. So what I'm gonna do is make a linkage that can pivot at each end here, but it'll follow side to side, and it'll also follow forward and backwards without creating any weird angles. So here's what I have. This is a Mustang shifter, um, I think from like an 87 to an 04 or something like that. Um, this is just a short shifter, a cheap one from eBay. Uh, you could get a lot better one. But the idea here is that um, this is a very similar shifter to the Colorado. And what I mean by that is there's a pivot point in the middle here, down here. It, it bolts four places. But the main thing is that the pivot point is in the same spot. So the idea here is if, if you can imagine my poor sketch here, um, both shifters are gonna have the same pivot point. So theoretically, if you put a linkage that can pivot at the same height here, your angles and geometry should work out very well that you get a very smooth shifter feel and you'd have a solid linkage connecting the two and this would get chopped off here. So that's the idea. This would be in the stock RX-8 location with my Mustang shifter here. This would be my AR5 shifter connected to the transmission. All right, now the last thing, if you can imagine that this is the transmission, um, the shifter is the whole way up here. I'm not gonna mount my remote shifter to the chassis. I wanna mount it to the transmission. That way, no matter where the transmission is, if I have to shift it a little bit to get things centered or move it forward or backwards to get more clearance for something, um, I want, it to all be connected straight to the transmission. So uh, my plan is to build a whole frame that come that extends back straight from the bolting points of the original shifter. Um, and basically my new shifter is going to mount straight to the transmission. Um, I'll just use material strong enough that uh, I can just leave it cantilevered. It really should only have to be about maybe five to six inches here, but um, for the most part, I think I can make something sturdy enough. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. Um, this can really be used for any transmission swap that you need to relocate the shifter. Um, and this is kind of an experiment. This will be just the first uh, generation of whatever I come up with. So I'm sure I will uh, have different iterations, make it better, improve on it. So hope you guys enjoy, hope this helps. Let's get to work. All right, guys. So. What I did next, um, I went ahead and found out how far back I want this. Um, and I'm, I'm doing my best to center where the shift knob is gonna be right in this OEM uh, hole here for the shift boot. Um, so figured that out. And what I did was go ahead and take some measurements and I have all basically eight holes that I need to drill in my members that are gonna extend out from the transmission. Um, and I have the location of all those holes um, and then I also went ahead and laid out the notch I need to make in order to, um, in order to clear this part of the shifter. So it'll bolt into these holes and I have to notch out around that shifter. Um, so I went ahead and kind of took some measurements for that and, uh, found out what I needed.
showed up. Yep. What's happening? I uh, replaced both my radiator fans because one died. I figured I might go well do two, both of them. Now I'm waiting for the service stop to open up. Matt? Matt hooking us up with the, the charger. Good deal. So here's where I'm at with these uh, mounts. So I have all, all my holes drilled and I officially have this bolted up. I have them loose, lock nuts on the bottom. I have my markings to notch this out to clear the shifter on the actual AR5 itself. Um, so I'll notch those out tomorrow and then these things will be ready to bolt in. And really, they're done. So. Um, once I notch those out, I'll be able to mount them up and make sure it's sturdy enough, which I'm using like this T-stock stuff, which should be pretty strong. Um, maybe I'll have to brace it in the middle or something. Um, but I don't think, I don't think I'll need to do that. So uh, moving along, that'll be done tomorrow morning early. And then Nick, do you have anything else to do tomorrow before? Hey, bye, Nick. Oh yeah, we're gonna align Nick's car before Sunday. He has another drift event. So, since the last drift event, he uh, got grippier front tires, front upper camber arm, or upper control arms, front upper control arms for more camber. So he added more camber. He also cut his steering bump stops for more steering angle. And put a big space on the front. Put a big space around the front for the drift stance oh, and, the and, clear, and clearings. Yeah. It's functional. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this time around should be uh, just that much better, and he can keep dialing it in each time he goes. Right. And it will just be more fun every time. So That's I'm gonna get the DSLR out with uh, the zoom lens, so I should get some some better clips this time. Uh, as long as I I can get a good spot to stand but it uh, should be a good time. So next up on this thing, after I get the uh, shifter done, uh, I have a drive shaft order, so that's on the way. I think I probably mentioned that. Um, but the next thing I need to do is drop the whole rear subframe. Um, the differentials in this thing don't mount uh, traditionally, so they actually have a power plant frame, which is over there. But now that I'm deleting that, and I have my own transmission mount, and I'll need my own diff mount, um, I need to mount the differential and make some custom mounts um, and I also need to reinforce the rear subframe because they tend to just rip apart um, so that'll be a whole project in itself. I have my brackets made up. Um, this is the end that'll mount to the transmission, the stock shifter location. Um, you can see I have a notch here to clear the shifter base, and then I have a notch here to clear the transom to sit below it. So um, both sides are triple. I'm about to mount them up and see how they fit. I have it mounted in. Um, transmission's still dropped down because uh, what I need to do next is actually take this um, stock shifter back out so I can drill a hole in the side um, for a pivot point. And then I'll also go ahead and just cut some of this uh, shifter off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some measurements for that, make sure I know what height I wanna drill this hole. Uh, but the idea I think is to try and make this linkage level. So I'll go ahead and get some measurements 
and go from there. Have my linkage made rough roughly uh, so what i'm going to go ahead and do is put my bolt in here and see how well it pivots uh, in my shifter back here and then if it's looking good i will go ahead and take this shifter out drill a hole in it and get another bolt for it all right so i have this bolt tightened down and so this is binding up a little bit and what's going on is this this bolt that i have in here has a shoulder and I used that bolt on purpose, that way I could tighten the bolt the whole way down to the shoulder and this would still have enough clearance to pivot in there. So what I need to do is take a little bit off just to just to reduce the thickness on this. And then also one of the bolts from my actual shifter itself holding this aluminum piece on is actually, you can see it sticking out right there, the, the end of the bolt sticking out and this is actually rubbing on it. So what I need to do is just shave that down flush with this uh, shaft here it's not bad though all right guys nick's here i'm here doing the final the final uh operation to the car before sunday before tomorrow uh he's doing his last alignment um the fun stuff huh nope. <laughs> and over here i have v1 of my shifter relocation um I need to get it in the car and test it out, but for now, it's starting to come together. I had to shave down my ends here so that they were skinny enough uh, to still be loose on this uh, shoulder here, even whenever the bolt was tightened down. And then same thing over here. And on this one, I actually had to bend the end of it slightly. See, it's bent to the left just a little bit. Um, and I kind of had to do that because of my human error on my drilling. Um, but it, from what I can tell, it feels solid. The next step is just to get it in the car and see how it feels all working together. And then I also want to go ahead and take it back apart before that and just put some lube in there. Um, and these bolts will get loctated because those I don't want moving at all. All right, I'm getting this thing back into the car. Um, that way I can test out the linkage and see just how you know uh, durable it is, how what it's going to feel like. Um, I'm going to use some dielectric grease to lube the uh, pivot points. I think it's it's kind of like a sticky grease, so it'll stay in there and it won't, uh, you know, get all over the place. All right, the linkage is officially in. All the bolts on the bracket or on the mount are all snug down, so everything's pretty much in place. There's no, no play in anything, so this is kind of a good test. Uh, the transmission is still hanging down, so it's not mounted solid, but... Uh, I don't really feel any binding at all, which is good. Feels really solid and really responsive. I will say there's probably a little bit more play side to side between the two than what I'd like. You can see Maybe you can see there's a little bit of play um, just because of the gap in there. Um, like you can see if I wiggle that, that one doesn't necessarily wiggle. So that I may need to fix, but for the most part, it uh, feels responsive. So the way to fix that, um, well, one would have been a tighter tolerance. <laughs> I might be able to shim it somehow, put a washer in there. All right, so we just got the shift knob on and Nick's gonna do a little, little test. I think it can be mint. Oh, yeah. It actually turned out really well. I mean, not that I doubt it, Kate, but it feels <laughs> very solid. So I think the only thing I was saying that there's a little bit of side to side play in this one because I cut my, my linkage too thin. So uh, Nick suggested just make a little plastic bushing or a little plastic washer to put in between there uh, just to fill up the gap and that'll be nice and solid. So, 
See, all that's left to do is chop off the top of that other shift knob or other uh, shifter. And uh, looks like this one's complete. Check it off the list. <laughs> all right, so the remedy for the side-to-side uh, -side play was a crush washer right in between the linkage and this uh, shifter shaft here. You can see I have one on both now just to create a little bit of a bushing in there. Um, those washers are just like copper, so they're soft, so they won't really cause any binding, but they'll just fill the gap and get rid of the play. Um, those would be something that I probably will have to replace once in a while. Um, you know, if I'm ripping this thing too hard, but um, yeah, it feels really solid now. It goes into all the gears, reverse. Does what I want it to do, so I'd count that as a success. Hopefully, if you're doing an AR5 swap or just an LS swap in general or any swap where you need to relocate your shifter, um, hopefully this helped. Overall, it turned out great. Um, the last things I need to do is notch the top here just so it clears my shifter bezel. Um, and then obviously I need to um, make a plate to cover up this hole in the, in the trans tunnel. So um, I'll get to that later. Once I pull the engine back out again, um, I'm going to actually cut this hole bigger and, you know, clean up around the edges and stuff. And then at that point I'll make a plate for it. Um, but yeah, it, uh, turned out really nice with the shift knob on here. It shifts really smooth. Um, so I'm going to just chop off that, the top of that shifter and then it'll just be a remote shifter. So again, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, this thing's getting close. Drive shaft is on the way. Just got a notification that that shipped. So uh, look out for that install and some uh, differential mounting and modifications in the next video. So stay tuned, like, comment, subscribe, see it.